Hello and welcome to Viewers Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vongani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode, we have an interview with Nigerian photographer Lola Akinmade. In Colorado, designers are mixing modern fashion with cultural textiles from different countries and we'll take you to the Botanical Gardens here in Washington, D.C. for the season's greetings holiday exhibition. Let's get on with the show. Images of African senior citizens walking the runway created a buzz on social media, eventually going viral. These AI-generated pictures challenge the typical depictions of elderly Africans showcasing them in an empowering way. Karina Chaudhry has the story. Malik Afegwa's series of images showing African senior citizens walking the runway in fashionable clothing went viral on social media late last year. The Lagos, Nigeria-based filmmaker and visual artist calls this work Fashion Show for the Elders, and it was created with the help of artificial intelligence. Afegbua says he aspires to portray African senior citizens in a way that is rarely seen. The Elder series is about showing um, the elder society in a place that is not marginalized, you know, in a place that they are spoken for um, in pop culture, fashion and other industries that we don't normally see them. The Elder series was in part inspired by his mother's medical troubles. The art The Ordeal Unlocked also opened new doors for Afegbua. Now he is collaborating with designers at Marvel Studios. Ruth E. Carter, the Oscar-winning costume designer for the movie Black Panther, was one of the many people who reached out to Afegbua. We have worked on something already, where we created the, the art direction um, of some sort and the, the, the costume for the main actor, which is for Blade. The rise of artificial intelligence has raised ethical questions, with some arguing that it undermines human-created art. However, Afegbua sees value in using AI as a tool. You cannot create what I created with AI because you don't even know how I did it. And that's because I created it with my own data sets as a tool. And that wasn't the only tool I used. In the heart of Amsterdam, a celebration is brewing. During Africa Fashion Week Amsterdam 2023, Afegbua brought his digital fashion show to life. <laughs> Linda Fashkin, owner of the clothing company Cocaine, or CKG, was one of the designers Afegbua invited to collaborate with on the fashion show. She said his designs are empowering. When we think runway fashion, we imagine 20-somethings and teenagers, but we have to remember something. That the elderly, they still want to feel sexy, they want to be vibrant. Afegbua plans to bring his fashion show for the elders to a runway in Nigeria in early 2024. This time, not with professional models, but with everyday mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, and grandparents, creating fashion to celebrate them. Karina Jodhri, VOA News. Disability concerns in Africa involve several social, economic, and cultural challenges, including social stigma and discrimination. A new movie by Ugandan director Matthew Nabuiso seeks to challenge some of the existing narratives about people with disability. The drama film When You Become was inspired by a true story of a young Ugandan man who was born with a disability and struggled to find acceptance and self-worth in society. Here is more. Keep me inspired. And by the way, get this tip from me. The award-winning film has been described as a groundbreaking moment for the representation and inclusion of people with disabilities. Dorek Ankunda plays a writer with a speech impediment. And through an interpreter, Dorek tells Red Carpet that the movie tries to break the stigma surrounding disability in the workplace, especially in the creative industry. The uh, industry, the movie industries, it is possible 
to include the people with disabilities, the art industry. Yeah, this creates this creates awareness that it is imp it, it is possible. It is estimated that over 12 percent of the Ugandan population live with some form of disability, and the producers of the film hope that Easy it will entertain and, and raise awareness and among audiences around the world. Sylvester Kasozi is the country director of the organization Light for the World Uganda. He's also the executive producer of the film. So uh, when you become is really a story that helps people understand what it would mean to walk in the footsteps of a person with disability. And in many spheres, family, relationships, the justice system, and most importantly, the performing arts, because that is an area that has really been blocked, uh, that has really blocked out people with disability. The film, which has already won accolades in major international film festivals, is a co-production of local NGOs, Light for the World and Reach a Hand Uganda. First of all, this was my first time to be uh, in this project of acting. It was very interesting and very amazing, working with people and being directed. At the same time, communicating with the director, you know, teaching them best sign language, it was wonderful. And also my other experience was reading the script. It was very hard. You had to cram and then act. But I tried my best to do that because that has been my dream to be an actress. This conversation is done. Social media continues to inspire and motivate more people to travel and visit new destinations. However, it also poses some ethical challenges that travelers, influencers, and the travel industry must navigate responsibly. Nigerian-born Lola Akimade Akastom is an award-winning travel writer and National Geographic photographer known for her work promoting sustainable travel and cultural exploration worldwide she spoke to me about ethical travel and photography. I think it depends on the story you want to tell. Because sometimes, and that is why I feel grateful as a storyteller that I can choose whichever medium based on what I want to say. So sometimes we need the verbosity of words to describe a place so you can feel it. Sometimes just a photo looking into the eyes of someone is enough to tell the story. So it really depends on what story you are trying to tell. And then for me anyway, is when I say, okay, maybe a photo essay might tell this stronger or maybe just writing really descriptive, immersive words. How would you say your cultural background has influenced your work and perspective on, on travel and on writing? I am Yoruba, that's my tribe. And Nigeria, we've got over 250 different tribes speaking over 500 plus languages and dialects. And so from a very early age, I was very sensitive to the nuances of culture because we have to live together. We have to acknowledge each other, respect each other, and make space for each other. And so that natural uh, empathy for different cultures is what I carried into travel writing. And that's why I really love getting beneath culture, uh, really understanding the nuances of why we're different and why we need to be different and what connects us, our similarities. And so moving to Sweden was just an extension of that and why I've spent a lot of time really, truly uh, getting beneath Swedish culture in my work as well. Mm -hmm. And I read that your work focuses a lot on uh, sustainable travel. Uh, wh why is that important to you and how do you incorporate that in your photography and your writing yes. too? It takes time to develop relationships. It takes time to really fully appreciate and so sometimes when I'm traveling through a place, I just pick a thing and say, you know what? I want to get this to know this place deeper based on its food culture. I don't have to see the big sites, but if I go deeper through one theme, that's a more sustainable way of uh, travel. You appreciate the place more. You gain deeper expertise and, and insight. That's one thing, but also making sure that the local communities are fully involved in the decision-making process, in that whatever you do does not um, disturb 
values, tradition. So that's super important. So you have to travel with purpose and intention. And that's what I do. I'm a big advocate for that. Designers in the Western U.S. state of Colorado are mixing modern fashion with cultural textiles from Iran, Afghanistan, Turkey, and Tibet. Biawes Skostan has our story. Traditional outfits opened this runway show in Colorado's capital as part of a culture cloth exhibition mixing contemporary designers with textiles from Iran, Afghanistan, Turkey, and Tibet. Paul Ramsey is the exhibit's co-curator. Every one of these has a story. These pieces over here were made to protect babies, you know. Uh, so many of these amazing objects were for living, for sleeping on, for sleeping under, for, for, for enhancing their lives on an everyday basis. The show included local designers competing for awards for best concept, most elegant, and most interesting use of unconventional materials, with models showing mostly hand-stitched designs on runways framed by hand-woven cultural traditions. Bewildering to us, you know, because we don't have many things that we unfold and look at and have some magical quality to them because of the way they were made by hand. That combination of cultures was part of a Denver arts and venue show that also included contemporary artists who are working with cloth, fabric, fiber, thread, and yarn. Scott Stern's VOA News, Denver. Botanical Garden of Washington, D.C. is presenting an exhibition for the end of year holidays. Its aim is to engage spectators in the world of pollinators, including bees and their crucial role in biodiversity. Ginny Niwa has more. The Washington Botanical Garden's exhibit, titled Seasons Greening, welcomes visitors with a stunning display of white and red poinsettias, also known as Christmas stars. These plants, numbering over 2,000 and of various colors, are accompanied by miniature replicas of Washington's famous landmarks, meticulously crafted from different plant materials such as leaves, acorn bark, stems, moss, and horse chestnut. Um, if you're talking about Christmas, right, you're going to have a Christmas tree. If you're talking about other um, Hanukkah or other things, you're going to be using some very specific plants for spices when you're cooking or other things, maybe like cinnamon or nutmeg. Um, so plants are just a really big part of a lot of the holiday traditions around the world. The tropics room, featuring numerous tropical trees, showcases the diverse climate's experience during the holiday seasons across the globe. In the outdoor gardens, a miniature train winds its way through a display of oversight models of Native American flowers and pollinators. Butterflies, bats, and a giant bees immerses guests in the world of plant biodiversity. At this here, it's just a beautiful idea of having the concept of the train running um, as uh, we thought it'd be inside, but it's outside and it's just with nature. And that's just kind of very soothing. Uh, the sun is out. Um, so yes, this is great weather right now. We enjoy it, yes. <laughs> According to the United Nations, pollinators are currently facing serious threats due to global warming and are disappearing at an alarming rate. Jeannie Niwa, VUN News, Washington. Thank you so much for watching VOS Red Carpet. I'm Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone. <laughs>